everybody. Um, this video is for the ladies. So if you're a man, you can watch this, but it's not for you. Um, no, I just wanted to talk a bit about um, uh, cycling the world as a woman. Because um, this particular endeavor, I believe I'm the first to do. Um, and... Uh, and I know when I started, there was certainly no information out there for female cyclists. Um, definitely not for long-distance endurance uh, cyclists. So, uh, I just thought I would um, put it out there for any ladies who are thinking of doing something similar. Um, or are wanting to beat my record, which would be cool. Um, I'm almost finished now. I have about... Oh, a thousand... 500 kilometers to go, um, which doesn't sound like much now <laughs> compared to what I've done, but I can assure you that every day at this point feels like a week. Um, I am just sort of hanging in there, and I am exhausted, so tired, you can't believe. Um, you start with pretty good uh, stamina, pretty good everything, and... Um, by the end, you start to really wonder what you got yourself into. <laughs> um, so if you're not in it for the right reasons, don't even start. There's no point. Anyway, I just wanted to say, though, I don't know why there haven't been um, a woman try this um, particular record yet. Um, because as far as I can tell, as far as it's been for me anyway, uh, we definitely have what it takes. Um... <clears throat> I started the cycle at about, I, I built up a lot of muscle and ate a lot of, you know, whatever I could um, to put on some weight before the cycle because I knew I would lose. And um, in fact, I've only lost about four kilos um, in the whole cycle. And probably that would be more muscle than anything else. I mean, I don't have much fat on me, but I'm not underweight. I'm not at bad weight. Um, I don't know if you can see. I'm... Um, still healthy so what I've come to realize is that the female body is so perfect for this kind of endurance uh, sport um, I think I eat probably the same amount as a man who doesn't do sport so not only is it cheaper for me um, on the road uh, but I, I seem to burn a lot less than guys. I mean, I know I burn at least 6,000 calories a day because I cycle from anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day and, uh, and you know, do from 200 to 250 kilometers a day. So I'm burning and I have bags and everything like that and weight. But I only eat less than 3,000 calories a day. Um, and I haven't actually lost substantially. So I think that, that we just, as females, we have more fat content, naturally. But we seem to burn um, a lot slower than men as well. So I think for endurance, we are, we have what it takes, you know, to go far. We might not have the same speed as men, but, I mean, <coughs> honestly, um, my speed is not that slow, considering that I'm lagging around to 22 kilos and um, and I still average on all terrain with wind, everything. I still average about 25 kilometers an hour. So, you know, that's not half bad. It's not much less than a male cyclist doing the same might do. So, um, yeah, to any women out there, totally go for it because uh, we can do it. And there's no reason why we haven't up until this point. Um... So I just wanted to show you what I'm carrying with me, my gear, because nobody really told me what what is necessary to bring, and so I sort of learned by trial and error. Um, <clears throat> at the beginning, you always bring too much stuff, but I have to say, if you're going to do something, like if you want to do 200 kilometers a day, um, you want to go as light as possible. So I started with a bike that was quite a bit heavier. It was like a hybrid, um, and it was a beautiful bike, but it was... Um, you know, just too heavy. So very last minute I changed for a very light racing bike. I don't know if you've seen Pegasus, but there he is.
very filthy. <laughs> Hasn't had a wash in a while. <clears throat> but the moment I wash them, it rains, so I've um, gotten lazy with that. Um, but okay, as you can see, uh, this is all I'm carrying on the bike. So, this is my tool bag, and uh, inside here is just change of tires, the tools you need to disassemble the bike when you get to the airport, um, and reassemble it. Um, stuff you always will need, like uh, scissors, I think I have a knife. Um, I picked up this, this is for your head when it rains. Because uh, in this winter cold, I was getting so cold, getting wet, so I basically just stick this on my head and I'm okay. Um, I carry sometimes, uh, now at this point, I'm, I don't, I've already changed my tires, but I was carrying a spare tire just in case. Um, uh, you will need, like, weird stuff, like, uh, like Ziploc bags, plastic Ziploc bags and uh, duct tape. And, uh, and I use a lot of, um, ah, what's the name for them? My brain's gone dead. Oh, no. Um, there's the tubes. Carry lots of tubes. Ah, a bit of oil. Um, batteries for the spot tracker. Uh... This, that, and the other. Um, and then in the front, I've got... Uh, oh, get this for the iPhone. It's great. It's uh, waterproof. Because if you're going to use your iPhone for, uh, for um, navigation, Google Maps or whatever, in the rain, you'll want, you'll want something rainproof. Um, but yeah, this bag in the front is all just medicine. And I'm telling you, it's a wonder that no one stopped me in the airport yet because I just look like a pusher. It's just all medicine. So, if you see, I've got I've got them all in Ziploc bags and they're all labeled nicely. So this is like omega-3, vitamin C. This is a uh, glucosamine. Um, I was having problems in the beginning with my, my joints were getting really sore because I wasn't used to lagging the weight of um, all the bags up hills. Um, and so I started taking glucosamine just um, for the joints on my knees and stuff. And it's really helped, so I don't have a problem anymore. And that was while I was building the muscle. Now I've got the muscles in my legs, so it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, yeah, just like uh, multivitamins. Um, oh, I carry always uh, aspirin, um, glutamine, um, vitamin C. And, uh, of course, you know, some painkillers for your monthly because uh, although you will start to lose um, your monthly, you'll, you'll be only, like, now it just goes for a couple of days. Still, the first day for me is always rough, so I have, uh, you know, that kind of painkillers. And I have antibiotics, and that antibiotics have served me well because I was so sick on the road a couple of times and I didn't want to stop for the, I <laughs> didn't want to waste the days. So I just took a, a course of antibiotics and... Um, and yeah, it works. So bring some antibiotics, and, uh, and yeah, and a first aid kit. Just a simple first aid kit. Um, so that's in my front bag, and then in the back is just this bag. And this, this is a wonderful bag. Um, actually, Mike Hall turned me on to this, but there's only one guy in the world who makes these bags, and it's uh, his name is Eric. And his company is called Revelate, and he's uh, based in, I think, Alaska. Um, but you can find his stuff online if you Google Revelate Designs. And uh, and this basically, the bag is brilliant because you don't need um, a bike rack to put it on. So you just basically attach it under the seat. You see? And that's that right there saves you a whole lot of weight. Um, but the downside, you cannot um, bring very much stuff. So all I've really got that I'm carrying with me is um, a couple, well at the moment it's winter time, so I have a couple of 
thermal shirts. In the summertime, I had just a couple of normal shirts. Um, two pairs of uh, cycling pants. In the summer, they were shorts, and now they're pants. And uh, in the winter, <laughs> the stuff naturally weighs more. And then I've got just um, one jacket, one raincoat, and uh, and yeah, just one toiletry bag. Um, yeah, us us hardcore uh, <laughs> lady athletes have to throw vanity out the window, so. There's nothing really feminine left in you after five months on the road. You just like mink. And you feel dirty and you look pretty, pretty dirty. And um, this hair is maintained with bar soap. <laughs> I don't bring shampoo. I don't bring soap. I don't bring anything. My toiletries are simply this. Toothbrush. Toothpaste. Deodorant. Sort of a vanity, but yeah, you really start to stink on the road, especially when it's hot. And my one vanity, face cream, because of all the damage in the sun. And, and, ah, tweezers. Not only do you maintain your beautiful eyebrows, but you will need these. And you will need them, more importantly, to get out the horrible little pieces, little shards of metal that get in your tire and burst <coughs> and burst your tire. Um, that come from, I think, from the reinforced truck tires that are scattered over the road. So if you don't have one of these, you're gonna have a really hard time getting anything out of your wheel. So always carry tweezers. And that's it, that's all I carry. Um, and then now in the winter, I've got a pair of winter gloves. Yep. And uh, I've been wearing these same shoes for five months, and I don't have any other shoes, so I basically have shoes that I can walk in, so that they've got clips, but you can also walk in them, so they're very useful. And uh, now that it's cold, I've also got these shoe covers, which protect um, from the, the, the rain and the cold. So. Um, so yeah, you got more stuff in the winter, but basically that's all it is. So when I get into the hotel at the end of the day, I wash the the clothes I have and um, and hope that they dry. And if they don't dry, at least I've got one change, and that's it. That's all I've got. Um, oh yeah, and in this bag I've got my video camera and some bars, some uh, cereal bars. And um, yeah, I think that's it. That is it. Oh, and I carry also, these are all of the the chargers. <laughs> when I get to the hotel at the end of the day, I have to charge the Garmin, I have to charge the, the lights on the bicycle, I have to charge my iPhone, I have to charge my backup iPhone battery. So yeah, you end up carrying all of this stuff uh, to charge. Um, but what else can I tell you? So more or less it. Um, but yeah, really ladies, um, we need to get out there, we need to dominate the roads because we have no reason not to. And um, all the guys are out there doing it, I don't know why it is a male dominated sport. Um, but you know, from cycling the world now, I can say that I've never really felt in very serious danger except perhaps twice. Um, but not because I was a woman, just because of either physical conditions that I found myself in or uh, or people. People are always not so nice sometimes, but most of the time people are really nice. Uh, so yeah, as far as like safety for women traveling, unless you're absolutely stupid, um, the reason why we shouldn't be out there. So um, yeah, all I got to say is let's do it. Let's get out there on the road. And, oh, gee, I forgot one more other thing.